You smell that? Oh, no. Ryan Johnson opened his mouth again. If you haven't heard, Star Wars The Last Jedi was a big old stinky deuce that killed Star Wars fans' hope of a decent trilogy. Since that turd hit the bowl, fans have been trying to flush the mess, including the little nugget of a director, Ryan Johnson's future plans for a trilogy. Every time things cool down, another rumor pops up to stir the pot and get Star Wars fans up in arms about the impending Armageddon known as Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy. It's been quiet for about a year. It was 2020, and after the hell we lived through, Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy was just too much to handle. But, good news folks, we finally have an update. Woo. Who. New Star Wars trilogy from Ryan Johnson is still happening. Patience, you must have. While a gazillion new Star Wars projects were recently confirmed by Disney, missing among its announcement was Ryan Johnson's planned trilogy. The director, who took charge of 2017's The Last Jedi, was first confirmed years ago to be making a new trio of films set in a galaxy far, far away, though details have been few and far between since. However, it looks like all the movies are still happening, according to author Soraya Wilson, who recently won a charity auction to speak to Johnson. I'm just going to post this now because I can see that I'm going to get a lot of requests. Yes. Ryan's Star Wars trilogy is still on, she tweeted. No dates or timelines because he has other projects going on, but it's happening. That's all I know about it. The news comes over a year since Johnson gave us all an update on where things stand with the movies. The director is saying in January 2020, I'm still talking to Lucasfilm, but they haven't announced anything on their slate yet. The year before, Johnson rubbish reports that his trilogy has been axed, saying, I'm still working on the trilogy. With all due respect to the movie bros, who I'm sure are lovely, kind bros with good fraternal intentions. Meanwhile, last year, the director also opened up about his one regret over the divisive Last Jedi, admitting that he would have loved to give it a test screening beforehand. Test screening is really nice, and that's something on Star Wars. You can't test Star Wars movies for a lot of different reasons, he said. I always hated test screenings, and when we were making Star Wars at a certain point in the process, you're like, God, I would give my left arm just to put this in front of 300 people in Burbank and see how it plays. So I don't believe it. I think this is one big troll job to rile up the fans after kicking their teeth in over Cara Dune and the Mandalorian. This is their victory lap. Now, the reason I feel this way is because of the circumstances. I read multiple articles about this topic, but shared this one from Digital Spy because it tells the whole story. Over on io9, they frame this story as Ryan Johnson was being interviewed by someone over his next project, etc., but fail to mention the part about how our intrepid interviewer won the right to interview him in a charity auction. What a shit prize! Bless this woman for burning her money. The whole thing was done on a Zoom call, too, with Ryan Johnson looking rather... rough. I know it's pandemic season two, but shouldn't Star Wars be treated with a little more decorum? Is Ryan Johnson even wearing pants? I don't want to know. What I want to know even less about is Ryan Johnson's trilogy, which I'll believe when I see. This digital spy article goes out of its way to paint Ryan Johnson in a more sympathetic fashion. They quote him saying how he wanted to show the film in front of 300 people and how he would have given his left arm. Well, Ryan, I'll give your left arm for a copy of The Last Jedi on Blu-ray. Oh, wait, I destroyed my shit. Well, looks like you're keeping that arm. Now, I know this article is quoting him, but I don't believe it. What I mean is, I believe he said it. I believe it's accurate. And I believe he's full of shit. I know this because Ryan Johnson told me. No, he's not my inside source, but I do have this video of him discussing how he likes to handle the audience. Um, I would be worried if everybody across the board was like, yeah, that was a good movie. It's much more exciting to me when you get, you know, um, a group of people who are, like, coming up to you and, and really, really excited about it, and you know it's going to be something that they're having their DVD collection and watch over. And the way that I got into, like, you know, Miller's Crossing, maybe, I don't know. But, uh, it, and then there are other people who walk out just, I mean, literally saying that was the worst movie I've ever seen. Having those two extremes to me is, you know, is the mark of uh, the type of movie that I want to make, so. I know people can change, but the only change that needs to happen is the stinky diaper that this man baby is wearing. I can comfortably say this is just a ruse. This is a story to rile us up. The Ryan Johnson trilogy feels like a perpetual hamster wheel. We just keep hearing the same shit recycled over and over and over. Can it just be over? Does Disney not realize how hated The Last Jedi is? An entire community sprung up in response to that piece of filth. Public perception hasn't been kind either. On Rotten Tomatoes, Hollywood's favorite convenient tool, The Last Jedi sits at a 90% with critics, but a 42% with fans. What's alarming is the number of reviews. There are 476 critical reviews, but over 100,000 fan reviews. Looking at these scores, people are still reviewing this film over three years since the release, and they still hate it for the most part. 
The Last Jedi has been weaponized since it was released. Just look at this review from a few weeks ago. Actually, only worth 3.5 stars, but I gotta do my part to bring balance to the Force. Solid movie with a share of flaws that tells an impactful story. Yeah, eat it, Andrew T. I gotta do my part, bitch! Do your part and fuck off. Take your stupid movie with you. For whatever reason, people can't comprehend why The Last Jedi is despised by those with the power. The fans. This lack of self-awareness is nothing new, but it keeps happening all the time. Screen Rant just put this article out today and, well, it's as stupid as all their other articles. Let's take a look. Why Star Wars Future Needs Ryan Johnson, Despite The Last Jedi's Division Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy means a bright future for the galaxy, far, far away. Known for his work on Brick, Looper, and Breaking Bad, Ryan Johnson proved a popular choice to succeed J.J. Abrams when the announcement came in 2014. Though retrospective opinions take a dim review, the Star Wars sequel trilogy started strongly with The Force Awakens, and fans eagerly anticipated the continuation. Officially titled The Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson's sequel looked to build upon the record-breaking success and positive reflection of its predecessor, and maybe even mirror The Empire Strikes Back, as a defining middle chapter. Instead, The Last Jedi would cleave the lasting divide in Star Wars fandom that has only recently started to heal. So confident were Lucasfilm and Ryan Johnson's Star Wars debut, the director was hired to mastermind a brand new trilogy before The Last Jedi even hit theaters. With hindsight, the announcement was premature as Johnson quickly received backlash for his take on Star Wars mythos, and even Mark Hamill himself expressed displeasure at Luke Skywalker's creative direction in the sequel. Naturally, the idea of such a divisive filmmaker writing an entire Star Wars era was called into question, and over the past four years, Ryan Johnson's trilogy has been the Schrodinger's cat of sci-fi, simultaneously happening and not happening. In a new interview, however, Ryan Johnson confirmed his Star Wars, you know what, fuck off, that's not what happened. This lady won a charity auction and asked him a question. The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker are both incredibly divisive films, but for completely different reasons. The Rise of Skywalker's backlash mostly related to the construction of the movie. Poor pacing, awkward plot holes, sloppy extensions, uneven character developments, etc. On the other hand, The Last Jedi's negativity mostly stemmed from being a bad Star Wars film rather than simply a bad film. Hmm. Excuses are still strong in 2021. Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi is undeniably unconventional and deliberately subversive. Yeah, we haven't heard that one before. Luke Skywalker tosses away his old lightsaber and doesn't want to save the galaxy. Supreme Leader Snoke is abruptly killed off before the mystery behind his identity is solved, and Rey is revealed as the daughter of no one in particular. Hmm, but that next movie changed everything. There's no climactic lightsaber battle, and Finn's subplot takes a darker route into the nitty-gritty of warfare. Oh, so you consider Canto Bite a darker take on the nitty-gritty of warfare? No. Fuck you. With Ryan Johnson taking so many sharp turns into unexpected territory, it's not hard to see why some fans took issue with The Last Jedi. But these creative decisions aren't contentious because they're inherently uninteresting. They're just not what audiences necessarily expected, or indeed, wanted from Star Wars at that juncture. Heading into The Last Jedi, fans anticipated more development from the mystery set up by The Force Awakens and hoped to see Luke Skywalker back in his heroic best. Then there are all the classic ingredients and themes that have remained true through every single Star Wars movie thus far, such as a clear divide between good and evil, and the rules of hyperspace. The Last Jedi doesn't deliver in that respect. And whether you love or hate Ryan Johnson's interpretation of the Star Wars universe, it's impossible to deny that he took a risk by shaking up the tried-and-true tested formula inherited from J.J. Abrams. No, you don't have to give him any fucking excuses. J.J. Abrams, the hack, copied the first movie. Guess what? Disney allowed that shit. Instead of acting like this guy's a victim, why not go back and watch, I don't know, Director and the Jedi, the making of this film. First draft, that's what his movie is. Don't make excuses for this asshole. It's the first draft. Somebody should have told him. Somebody should have said, look, dude, give it another whirl. Hmm, maybe the president of the company should have said something like this. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Sorry, I'm getting off on a tangent. Watching The Last Jedi, it's very apparent that Ryan Johnson was looking to leave his own signature on the Star Wars tapestry. Well, he did. He wiped his ass with it and left the shit stain. Whereas The Force Awakens adapted and modernized A New Hope for the current generation, it's called Ripoff, idiot. Johnson was clearly looking to be bold and progressive. <laughs> Consequently, most of The Last Jedi's divisive moments are Johnson refusing to play by the rules laid down by previous directors. J.J. Abrams wanted to build mystery boxes around Snoke's identity and Rey's parentage, but Johnson envisioned Kylo Ren as the main villain and felt Rey shouldn't have any connections to existing characters. Johnson also wanted The Last Jedi to dig into the corners of the Star Wars lore that were relatively fresh, such as the arms dealers on Canto Bight, and didn't want to make Luke Skywalker the wise old Jedi warrior everyone had been fantasizing about for the past 35 years. And they're still trying to make excuses for this guy. When you speak kindly about him, you talk about his shortcomings. If you're trying to build him up by explaining his shortcomings, well, 
you're not doing a good job building them up. I'm going to breeze through this because this is one big old circle jerk of an article, but let's close it out. After the collective disappointment of The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, there is no shortage of ill feelings surrounding the Star Wars sequel trilogy, and Disney's decision to continue the Skywalker saga might have been doomed from the start. After all, The Force Awakens was lambasted for being too derivative, The Last Jedi took flack for being too different, and The Rise of Skywalker was the maligned result of Lucasfilm desperately trying to fix the situation after pulling the plug on Colin Trevorrow's script. Apparently, tying together three different eras of Star Wars while weaving in the exciting new elements that advance but don't contradict. Let me stop right there. What were new exciting elements? I proved my point. Established canon isn't as easy as John Favreau and Dave Filoni make it look. To stay relevant in the decades to come, the future of Star Wars on the big screen needs to remove itself completely from the Skywalker family, starting fresh with a new story and an altered tone, and Ryan Johnson is the perfect man for the job. You know, they do try to remove themselves from the Skywalker lineage, but when they really fuck it up, who do they call? Luke Skywalker. He's here to rescue you. He's here to rescue all of Star Wars. This article shits on The Last Jedi, but then says Ryan Johnson is what Star Wars needs. Nah. He had a shot. He screwed it up, and we're not interested. No thank you. Here's a nickel's worth of free focus testing. Don't make these damn movies. Just shut the hell up and go home. Ryan Johnson is a lost cause, and don't even think about him directing another Star Wars film. Stop! I told you not to think about the Ryan Johnson trilogy. It's not happening, and you're going to get yourself all excited for nothing. In reality, the only people excited by this non-announcement are the residents of Roanoke, Virginia, circa 1590. It's such a stupid series of films to make. Why would anyone want more from this human bowling ball? I love kicking the shit out of The Last Jedi. It deserves to be derided as the biggest piece of shit in science fiction. Hell, in all of everything. It seems hyperbolic, and it probably is, but fuck it. This guy deserves it. He killed Luke Skywalker, uh, Jake Skywalker. He killed a Skywalker. Why couldn't it have been Rey? She's the Curly Joe of the family. Sorry, Curly Joe. R.I.P., sir. It's kind of embarrassing to have the media act like this was a major announcement. This was the world's worst charity auction prize. Discussed over Zoom. Wow. Talk about pomp and circumstance for Star Wars. <laughs> Don't spend all that money on the red carpet treatment for Ryan Johnson just yet. Save the rest to make up for those Disneyland losses. Ooh. Too soon? This is the state of Star Wars in 2021. Relegated to Zoom. If this was a real announcement, it would have had Kathleen Kennedy flub her way through an announcement. I put the Ryan Johnson trilogy in the same category as the sequel trilogy remake. It ain't happening. It's wish fulfillment across the board. Nobody would benefit from either of these projects. They're a massive commercial failure in the making, and they would cost way more than just money. Public image is already at an all-time low, and this would finally sink Star Wars. So folks, what do you think? Uh, it's not happening. No. No to the Ryan Johnson trilogy. Why? Because why not? Who would ever go see this? Who would support it? The Last Jedi is a divisive film. Three years later, they're trying to make excuses for it. Still, nothing has changed. And guess what? Still, nothing has changed. The fans don't like it. I don't care what Disney wants to do. There's a reason why The Last Jedi was a dark mark across the Star Wars brand. Don't retroactively try to go back and act like we all loved it or we were all stupid. We were told we were dumb in 2017 for not liking it. We were told we were racist. We were told we were bigoted. We were told we were sexist. Now we're being told we were wrong the whole time. No, you don't get to play by those rules. You, were to you told us we were all these terrible things the whole time. Stick with it. Don't act like fans were just disappointed. No, we were disappointed over other things. Yes, the movie sucked, but the whole situation was ugly. And it's more than just a bad film. So I hope history remembers the truth, not what Screen Rant and those other people try to write about it. So folks, thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button and comment. We've heard on good authority that if you do both, they really help the channel. And guess what? We've just hit a new milestone. So thank you very much, folks. Thank you for joining. Thank you for everything. Uh, it's exciting. It's always exciting, but now it's double exciting. Uh, triple. It's 4,000. It's exciting 4,000. There we go. How's that? Iron Man reference. Boom. Avengers. You like that, right? Rest in peace, Tony. So, folks, if you like what we do, besides that, you can also check us out over on Patreon. We have all kinds of exclusive content. You can go from a dollar to the top tiers, and we have stuff for everyone. But while you're down in that comment section, make sure you check out the link in the description for the comic. That'll be out uh, in a couple of weeks. We'll have the announcement. But it's drawn by me with a cover by Anna, that Star Wars girl, as well as myself. And uh, it's really exciting. There's a lot of hype. There's a lot of press. There's a lot of buzz going around right now. So make sure you guys sign up for that and uh, don't miss out. This is a second chance to get the comic. And once this one's done, that's it. 
So folks, thank you for watching. I'm going to get out of here. But before I go, I got to say just one last thing. Ryan, it ain't happening, son. Hang it up. It's time to go. Oh, also, be excellent to each other. <laughs>